We get lots of questions from installers about choosing an EV charger for destination charging. In other words, a charger for businesses who want to provide charging facilities for customers and employees. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at the latest addition to the Maxi Charger range from Savardis, as we think it's a great charger for installers and end users. It's a pretty smart looking unit, especially when installed on a pedestal like this, which is often the natural home of the destination charger out there in the car park. Now, cast your mind back 15 years, and you're perhaps thinking the design looks similar to the classic Apple iPod with the charging socket placed in the middle. Now, you can't tune it to select your favorite tune. However, this version includes a full color LCD display which we'll explore later. Now our recommendation for destination chargers would be to install an untethered or socketed unit like this so the end user isn't responsible for maintaining the cable and we're also seeing a rise in cable theft. Of course one of the key questions from installers is actually is it easy to install and this is one of the few three phase or 22 kilowatt chargers on the market that includes a built-in pen fault detection device and full RCD for DC and AC leakage protection. Now just to put a bit of context to that, if you fit an EV charger that needs an external pen fault protection device and you then have to fit an RCD to an existing three phase distribution board, you're already well into the cost of the actual charger itself. The physical installation is simple with this mounting bracket which means you don't have to drill the enclosure and possibly damage the IP rating of the unit. All you do is remove the decorative trim plate and the cover to access the electrical terminals. We've installed this one here using a rubber cable HO7 RNF which is using the lower cable entry which is also supplied with the cable gland fitted. Inside, you'll also see an RJ45 data socket for the internet connection, which can be used if you're using a cable such as EV Ultra. And there is an option to connect a data cable via the external RJ45 socket, complete with a cover to maintain the IP rating. Now, you can also connect the unit using Wi-Fi, which is what we've done in this installation. However, in lots of heavyweight commercial installs, connecting to the data network can be challenging, requiring meetings with the IT department and conversations about firewalls. To avoid those challenging conversations or for installs where there is no internet connectivity, the Maxi Charger includes a slot where you can insert a 4G SIM card. Of course, it's easy saying it has all those different connection methods. What's it really like to commission? Well, this was pretty straightforward. As long as you've got the commissioning app on your phone and your installer account set up, you simply connect to the charger with Bluetooth. And then once you're in there, you can find the little card that comes in the box. that has got the critical QR code on there. That's got the serial number and the pin code. You scan those details with your phone and then you can connect up to the Wi-Fi network that we've used here, for instance. Once you're in there, you can obviously set those other important installer parameters, things like load balancing, the current on the circuit that the uh, charger's connected to, pretty straightforward. And of course, as part of the installation process within the app, you can also test the RCD function in there if you've got a charge point adapter or a handy EV to plug in. And I'll tell you this, Rick was even delighted in the packaging you got a free knee pad. So all in all, this charger is packed full of installer friendly features, but what about the end user? Now, before we delve further into the features of the charger, something that concerns both installers and end users is the amount of power that's available at the installation site. This is one of the most challenging issues when a user wants to install multiple charge points. Now, we aren't gonna delve deep into that in this video, but I will leave a link in the description to explore the solutions for load balancing for Savardis that solve these issues and more. And of course, you'll also find a link to these chargers as well. Now, the first question from end users is often, how can we control who uses the chargers? And importantly, how can we build them for the power that they do use? Now, this charger has integrated an MID class metering solution, so there's no problems with the accuracy of the billing. A few options to control who can use the charger. We have RFID cards, which could be great for regular users or workplace destination charging, 
or you can use the app and start a charging session using the Bluetooth connection. However, what if you've arrived at a destination, it's dark, and you don't have a clue about the app or how to use the charger. That's where the LCD screen comes in. Out of the box, it displays the QR code of the charger, which you can scan via the app, or you can also see the unit prices for electricity and possibly the penalties for waiting time if you decide to block the charger. Q, charger edge. Angry. You can also customize this display. So perhaps a bit of branding to suit the destination or the venue, perhaps some adverts or special offers for food, mm, or other local attractions for food and drink. Now, the usual way to providing this rather useful information is often a badly printed piece of A4 paper taped somewhere underneath the charger. Now we've spoken about apps and this is a contentious issue for EV drivers. The last thing you want to do after a long day on the road is discover you have to download yet another app to charge and spend ages inputting your payment details. With this final piece of the jigsaw to save loads of hassle managing users and keeping track of billing, you'll probably want to make the charger work with one of the established EV charging apps. One which the chances are an EV driver will already have installed on their phone. And the good news is this charger is enabled with OCPP or Open Charge Point Protocol and in this video here we'll show you how you can enable this charger with one of the leading EV charging apps.